Hi everyone, thank you for joining me once again. Uh, I have a fabulous guest, Professor Thomas Streintz, Executive Director of Guarini Partners from New York City and Professor of New York University. Thomas, thank you for, for joining me. Really glad to be here. Uh, you're an expert of regulation and uh, legal tech and AI. Uh, you mm -hmm. organized a, a fabulous event, uh, so can you tell us a few words about it? Thanks so much uh, for having me. In this particular event that we hosted at NYU Law, we tried to get a conversation going around the regulation of generative AI, so the kind of products that have been put on the market in, in recent months, most prominently OpenAI's ChatGPT, and the kinds of regulatory questions that they raise, both from a governmental perspective, from an international perspective, and also from the perspective of the different players that form part of the generative AI supply chain. So in the conference, we ask a set of questions that I, I think are, are really useful to think about, but it's really more the start of a conversation around AI regulation rather than the end, which is a very exciting moment. So we start off by talking about how does generative AI work from a systems engineering uh, computer science perspective, and then contrasted that with the panel that thought about um, how lawyers should think about generative AI, because it turns out that AI is, of course, a very prominent term. And if you write a research proposal or if you pitch a startup, you want to use that term. But it's not clear that AI is, is a thing to which you can then simply apply the law that you can simply regulate in that way. So that question of how should we think about AI? Is it a product or is it a service? If you're a trade lawyer, is it, is it, it, can either be, it can either be a good or a service. It can't be both really. And the same is true for other legal and regulatory domains. So if you think about the copyright implications that will frame the conversation in a certain way, if you think about product liability, that's going to uh, adopt a different kind of framing. And in the European context, if you think about law and technology regulation, there is, of course, the GDPR, the European Data, uh, General Data Protection Regulation, that is very prominent. So we had a panel on, on that question that we framed around the issue of whether generative AI as such as a technology, as an infrastructure, is compatible with data protection and privacy laws. And on that panel, everyone seemed to say that it is or it has to be. In, in contrast to, to that panel, the next one tried to get at the supply chain question, uh, which makes it so tricky to think about AI regulation. Because again, it's not a thing. It's, it's something that might be put on the market by a, a certain actor. But once you look into the components that f create the software that runs a certain AI application, they might come from all over the world. And they might have gotten produced by different actors. They might run on different computing infrastructures. So how to think about the generative AI supply chain and how to allocate risks, rights, and responsibilities is really an open question. And that question, I think, also greatly complicates, at the moment, the efforts in the European Union to create an Artificial Intelligence Act. The question then becomes how to differentiate between those that might create a large language model and those that might procure the data that goes into the training of a large language model and those that use large language models that produce other kinds of products. And that's where the AI Act conversation seems to be stuck. My, my own take on this is that the regulation needs to be responsive. And so instead of thinking, okay, it's either the, the provider of the model or the provider of the application, it's in many cases, uh, it's going to need to be both. Um, Do you think that lack of uh, regulation supports the, the development of AI? Uh, or are you awaiting the, the European regulation and uh, also uh, regulations in US? Yeah, so, uh, thanks a lot. That, that's, a, that's a great question. I, I personally um, think that regulation of certain AI systems in certain contexts is inevitable. Uh, it's going to happen and is already happening. So, existing law applies, that's true for data protection, but it's also true within sectoral regulation. If you use AI to um, design better chemicals, chemical regulation is going to be relevant for you. If you use AI to create financial products, financial markets regulation is going to be relevant for you. Um, the, the trickier question is whether we need horizontal AI regulation, as the EU seems to think, and, and how to design that well. I think the case can be made that there are cross-cutting issues that require us to think differently about risks that emanate from AI. Uh, but that is a and, and would be a, a big departure from how AI development has proceeded over the last couple of years. So 
my short answer to your question is that regulation is going to come, but what it's going to look like is, is still very much up for grabs, both in the European Union and in the United States. Thomas, thank you for, for, for your time. Uh, thank you for our discussion. It was really interesting. No, thanks a lot for having me. Thank you. And see you guys next week, same hour. Bye-bye.